YouTube, this is Dismal here, and uh, I'm bringing you guys a tutorial that has been uh, awaited for a while now uh, from a few people that have been asking me for it. And it's basically, I'm gonna be coming up with a new series. I'm gonna put a tutorial every now, uh, every like probably maybe once a week, or once every two weeks. And I'm just gonna be teaching effects that uh, people ask me, ask me how to do, and in my videos and anyone's videos. So if you're a beginner, it's gonna help you learn some new effects, even if you're advanced. And you just you've seen something you don't know how to execute it yourself, and you just need help pulling it off. Uh, just if you have any questions, like if you have an effect that you want to learn, just PM me or add me on Skype, and show me the video and tell me what you what effect like uh, where in the video it is, what effect, all that. And I'll probably get to it in my next tutorial. I'm gonna show you three effects this this tutorial, and um, so we'll get started really quick. The first one I've been asked about a few times actually is in my promo video. How in the beginning you can just see the the yellow, you know, just have like tails kind of, and they circle around the circle coming in. They like grow outwards and they just rotate. It's really easy if you think about it, but I guess uh, a few people had problem had problems actually doing it. So basically, all it is is I just went into Cinema or into Photoshop, and basically there's a trick like. If you're in Photoshop, well, in After Effects, I always use a 1280 by 720 canvas. So in Photoshop, if you want to like get something really centered, if you're importing it to After Effects, make it the same size composition. I also have some guides mapped out at the halfway points. And basically, all I did was to make this was I created a new layer. I just basically drew it a ring. It's really easy. I'm not gonna go into uh, detail about how to make it exactly because you know it's just basic modeling the shape here and I just kind of cut it in half and if you, as you see it's a uh, it's perfectly centered so if I were to um, like if I were to make the tail on it I'd have to like do you know pen tool it or any other effects that you need you can also kind of like make another circle and like cut it off like this and it would make it look like it's increasing but um, basically, and then you just duplicate it and you rotate it all the way around. I think I have a the same one that I used there, if I can find it. Um, <laughs> give me a second. I think it's in here. Yeah, here it is, right here. Basically, here it is. It's just a half a circle, so basically you just want to bring it to After Effects. And I'll do it really quickly. So, once you have your thing, I'll, I'll maybe I'll even include a, a download link to the one I already made previously, and you guys can just throw it in. But here's how you're gonna go to do it. So, if you have your new composition, double click on the project panel to bring up a, like load a file. I'm gonna go to where I saved it, which is right here. All right, and because it's on a 1280 canvas, it centers perfectly, and you wanna make sure it's completely centered because when you're rotating it. If you have centered circles and if it's not centered in the same in After Effects as in Photoshop, it's gonna like it's not gonna circle properly around your your um like whatever you're circling around. Like if you have a circle in the middle, just basically for highlighting anything. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and rotate it 180 degrees. So as you can see there it's the perfect circle. Um basically if you wanna and I'm guessing you guys already know how to keyframe this, but if not, I'm going to go through it really quickly. Basically, all you want to do is, if I want it to end at this particular um, part, I'm going to, because the anchor point's already in the center, and this is already centered, just key the rotation by clicking the small stopwatch on each layer, and it's going to come with a little mark. I'm going to drag it back because I want it to end at this point, and I want to make sure that it's rotating the thickest end first. So I'm going to rotate it a whole like this. So basically it's going to come in, it's going to rotate. You, if you also, you can also add the scale to it, it would look good. And I've also seen uh, people, if you want to make it uh, come in a different way, like as, as you can see in this one, it kind of like grew almost. So basically all I did for that was I just went to effect, go to transition, radial white. Basically I just used this to kind of uncover it. 
if you want, feather it a bit so it looks a little cleaner. And basically that's all you want to do, is just feather it in. You can start like this. So let me just show you real quick, I'll just make it really quickly. There, I just copied and pasted this. This is just simple keyframing, guys. So, as you can see, that's another way it kind of comes in. A lot of people do it like that, too. So, basically, you can either have it rotate in if you can. One sec, I'll just make it so you can see both really quickly. All right, so you can basically have it go like this, rotate in, or you can have it uh, radial wipe in like that with a feather. So, that's the first effect. That's pretty easy. And uh, I think we're gonna move on here. The next one I want to show you guys is um, let's do this one first. This is in my newest intro I made. And if you look, just let me load it. It's right at the very beginning. Right at the very beginning here, how those three circles come up in, in the shape of a square, and they kind of overlay. Oh my god, it's so early it doesn't catch it sometimes on YouTube. There it is there, those three circles there. They kind of all come in from different sides and they form a square like that. It's basically, it's really easy if you guys can think about it. It's basically just with masks. So I'm gonna have a background. I'm gonna create, I'm just gonna create basically, just let me make a, a guide so I can send this. And basically, if you wanna know what a kind of quick way to make a, um, a center point in After Effects, just create an adjustment layer and then just drag out guides right on the edge of the thing because it already centers it with the adjustment layer. So basically, actually I need an adjustment layer anyways. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to take the uh, square, the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to make a square so that my circles can fill it. Because um, it just, I want like an outline of my square. I'm going to change the mask mode to none. Go up to Effect, Generate, and I'm going to add a stroke to this so that, as you can see, and the different why I added it to none, because if you were to add, it only goes on the insides of the square, and it doesn't fill the outside. I don't really, I just want the outside filled as well. So that is just my basic square. So basically, all I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to just create some circles. So just go in. Take your, uh, make sure you don't have any layers selected. Take your circular tool, or your ellipse tool. Oops, I locked my guides. And create some circles that are bigger than the square, so it can all, so it can fill it. And you're gonna want to just, I'm gonna duplicate it three times, and I'm gonna change the color. I'm gonna use just a red on the first one, the second one I'm gonna just use the blue, and the third one just a green. All right. So then what I'm going to want to do next is I'm going to open all these up, open the position tabs. Oh, sorry about that. Freaking stupid Skype's in the way. Oh, seriously? There we go. All right. So I have the position up in here. Let me turn these off. Okay. All right. I have the position open. I'm going to uh, select them all, and I'm going to keyframe, because basically this is where I want all the, the circles to end in this basic centered position. So I'm going to bring it back a certain amount of frames. And I'm just going to start dragging the circles around. So, oops, got the wrong. Make sure you have your cursor selected. I'm going to drag the green one down into the right. I'll drag the blue one over to the right and the red one up in the left. So it all kind of comes in. Make sure they're not touching the, 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 the square. All right. Also, you want to put your, your box ahead of all the other layers. So it looks like it's coming underneath it. Uh, basically, you're just going to want to, right now, see, it all comes at the same time, and you don't really want that. And you also want to make sure you have the right layers on top of each other. Like, for example, I, have, I want the red one on top. I want the green one on the very bottom and the blue one in the middle. So basically, all I'm going to want to do is to do this. Just kind of, I'm just going to kind of, actually, I'm going to shrink these first because they're kind of far apart make it a little quicker and I'm just gonna kinda offset these values so I want the green one to come in first Oops, this is the green one let me just 
name these so I don't get confused. Blue, spelled blue wrong, that's very red. Alright, so the green one I want to come in first, so I'm going to leave it where it is. The blue one, I'm going to move the keyframes, whatever, a certain amount ahead, and the red one, I'm going to move them ahead of the blue one. So as, it, as you can see, it's going to come in like this. Uh, let me, I just want to bring them a bit close together so they kind of overlap, so it's not like all just singular movement. I want them all to kind of come in at the, all to be in contact with each other. There we go. Alright, so basically that's all you have right now and you're saying what the heck is this. But basically all we need to add now is just a mask around what's basically the same mask as this. So if you go into your adjustment layer that has the stroke, take your first mask, copy it, make sure you click on this part, click on your next layer and paste it. It's going to show the mask over here because the position is all messed up. But basically just go into your mask, make sure you you uh, have your your marker on the same point as where your position moves and just keyframe your mask and then just basically drag it over your square. Then go to your ne the last point, take your mask again because it's going to be moving because the position is moving. Bring it over your square again, and there you go. So basically, and you're also you're gonna want to change the the mode back to add because we actually want the mask to be in effect here. So basically, as you can see, the red one works. It fills in the square. Basically, you just want to continue the same thing really quick for the last three. As you can see, I'll just do it all. Do it very quickly here. Just want to copy and paste. I'm just gonna copy and paste the mask again. And it all, they all have different positions, so the mask is still going to be out of place, so you just got to keep taking it, using those keyframes, the same spots, and drag it on. And it's already in position, perfect. And then the very last one here. Bring the mask open. Um... What's my mask doing here? Oh, there's my mask. I wonder where it went. Right. Just make sure it's all good. And there you go. So basically, this is just a simple version. You can also add like, uh, like you can change the scales of your circles as they're coming in, make it look even cooler. Maybe the direction. Maybe the make it like play with the keyframe and get a bigger flow. And also, you can just hide this, and it'll just look like. A squares form. This is basically what I, all I did in my other one, in my uh, intro there. It's basically all all it is to it. It's very simple, very easy, and it looks kind of cool. So basically, that's that one. And the very last effect here, speed through this really quick. It is in my other intro, the Reza one. Basically, how these these little ripples come up behind the circle here. And basically, this is really really easy. All I did, take your circular tool, go into the center where you have a, oh, I don't want a mask, sorry. Deselect that layer, I didn't mean to have that selected. Uh, create a circle. Let's just go with white. Then just go up here with your ellipse tool selected and your layer selected and click this button. That'll make it so it creates a mask instead of a shape. And just go right in the dead point again. And just make it a little bit smaller than the first circle. And then just hit invert. Basically, all I did with it with this was I was just playing with the flow of the the scale of the mask and the or the scale of the overall um, the overall shape and the expansion of the mask to make a, like a ripple effect. So basically, all you're gonna want to do is I'll just come back here. I'll keyframe this to zero, so it comes up like this. Just make it so the scale comes up. Basically, all you're going to want to do is keyframe the expansion as well on the mask, because that's what's going to kind of make like a ring effect, like a ripple. And then, and then eventually just bring the expansion over the total mask, and it'll just disappear. It's really easy, and basically all I did was I just... To, used a bunch of the layers and then just kind of uh, threw them all over the place and kind of looked like a ripple. 
and you can just uh, play around with the settings, work on the flow of it. And a lot so that's pretty much all the effects in this guys in this uh, tutorial. So uh, this has been a quick tip. After Effects tutorial by Dismal, there's going to be a lot more coming. If you guys have any uh, effects you want to learn or any questions, be sure to PM me and I'll get to it in my next tutorial. Alright, thanks. See you guys.